three and two and one morning, uh, whatever time you're watching. It's morning for me. It's 8 a.m. <coughs> gonna get started. I've been uh, to the outside. It looks like I've been half-assing it. I haven't been half-assing it. I've been finishing. Well, I haven't been. I've been continuing things. Finishing seems to be very hard, but we're getting closer. So, um, we were in Albion. We read about the White Sands. Here we have White Cliffs of Dover. We have been in a system that have always preached white and black. People have believed that Albion has been named because of the color of people's skin. Nobody has gone into it to say, ooh, it's been named Albion because La Bon means white, adding an A, A La Bon, Al, or A turns to A L, and turns to Al. La Ban, the other vowels dropped, and then it goes Al B. So that is how we get. Albion. If you pay attention, every time Albion is written in another language, let me show you real quick. Bane, ban. Only the European, uh, excuse me, the Scalian, the Japhetite. He's the one. That is ending his ship. Rome ends with an M, just like La Alban ends with an N. Right? Angelica not is because they think they're angels because they have fallen angel blood in them. The the highest of their caste system has a fallen angel blood, right? So they add the Y. Now we continue down here. In etymology looking at the same thing. I want you to look at how this is Albu. Again, how Rome, Alban in a definite mm, ends in a definite mm, not a e or anything like that. Here you have Yon. You've heard these things. Yoni, Adoni, Adon. Let me show you where it connects to you and me. Here you have the U by itself, right? Here you have the B O I, sometimes Y. I and Y are not supposed to follow each other. So the syllable breaks there. That's what's going, it's a syllable break. Now, where is this other one that ends with an H and it should be, right? You find this one that ends in the H. Because I was looking at it before I started the video. Um, here's bus again. I don't see it. That's funny. All right. And here, like Adonis, I own this, I own this. I own this, I own this. So again, these are the Britonic name. Brit-ish. Ish. All right. 1980s, so understand, there has never been an ish in any of these names until the 1980s. That means historically, there's no Jew-ish. That means historically, there's no Brit-ish. These are proxy, these are imposters. This is vanity to its fullest. I've seen an evil on the earth. 
it is vanity of the Gentiles. So, again, this you see this etymology.com says the nativity of a country, and it's it's not. It's later use of the nature or character you have a driver's license it's called a mask it is called a character a man cannot do business with a building the more you study law the more you study that you need a fake identity to be able to do business with a building you see, nature or character. If I change my name, I've put on a new bat suit. Right? If Batman puts on a new mask, they'll call him a different name, right? So if one person messes up their name, they go and create a whole new identity, then it's considered like starting over. This is the action that they're doing. They're saying, oh, we're going to start over it and rename ourselves. You've seen this. These people hate their families. And they fucking do what they run for. I'm going to the store for milk and cigarettes and never come back. Go three cities over and start a new city. Uh, start a new family. We've seen this over and over again. They left from Scadia, went over to Europe and said, Sorry, oh, we're, we're, we're Germans. When... I'm pretty sure Rome knew exactly who their, who their neighbors were. In fact, the Romans are recording in history as the Scathians start filtering out of Scathia and coming into Rome. And that was the uniqueness of reading one of these books written by a Roman. So it's really a whole... How do you say? They're not a nation. They are many tribes of people all playing talented Mr. Ripley. Listen, this is not to offend anybody. This is the truth. If you live in America, if you live in the United States and you're calling yourself an American and you're white, you're not. You're fucking scathing. Your people were brought here to be Slaves of the American, you overthrew them. You're not Americans. Your IDs prove you're not Americans. You're U.S. debt servants. <laughs> Fucking employees. And that's the beauty of it. The people that are actually in control, they're actually doing this to everybody. And they don't say anything to the lower white people. They are their slaves too. Those lower white people are just benefiting. They are benefiting from the devil's blood within the vessel of their higher ups, their masters. So you gotta think about it. You have to think about it. This is why, this is why originality has already passed. That's why you constantly hear, there's nothing new under the sun, there's nothing new under the sun, because these people aren't creating anything new under the sun. The real hierarchy of them is going out to seek that which is of old. And then they change a the name. Of that which is of old, so you don't know you're dealing with something that is old. All of us think these TVs, broadcasting, it's all new. But what if it? What if it was old? What if it was actually very, very, very old technology? We're just being told this is new. Now, this doesn't mean, what if this was like, they used this back in Rome? No. 
was much, much, much older. And without switching subjects, you know, it's hard to explain it. I listen to this video today. And now they're breaking down the Sumerian text, telling you what the Sumerian text says. And I listened to this video, and it said during the time of Sumeria, this one king went out, and he was told by his dreams to dig 18 cubits in a specific area. So he, did, he dug there. And he undug an old foundation. And he rebuilt on this old foundation. Now, everybody knows the Sumerian uh, tales, the stories. They're supposed to be very ancient. They're supposed to be much older than 4,000 years old. That's no different then the caucus being brought here to undig the cities here. No different. No different. In fact, you know what's funny? Let's see. No, this is what we want. Uh, so, Indian Mac looked up the word Aboriginals from Ab Origine. See, I didn't did this stuff six years ago. A plus B equals the original. Like now I can see it even in the definition. I, when I started to start saying A plus B equals the original, I was kind of making that shit up. Now I see it's actually in the, the. So when I was making it up, it was just logic and reason. And logic and reason equals the same thing they had written in the books of old. The first applied to the original inhabitants of Greek in Italy. Okay, so do you know what's that saying, right? The inhabitants of Greek in Italy are here in America, and we've been calling them Aborigine. There are no Indians. Indians are Filipino slaves brought from the Philippines. Pino slave trade brought over here to America. And they're such good slaves to the Spanish. They're so easy to dominate when they just stamp their ass as Indians because why? They were trying to get the what? The the inheritance of you to not be respected. Right? That's, that's what this woman read in her book. All right. And then, again, look at who the people you, are being de dealt with here. Hmm? Hmm? See, all these people, if you look at all these people's material, they don't preach the same thing. They actually preach one side and the other side. Right? One person thinks they're black Phoenician. The other person has straight hair. They don't have an afro. And if they burn their hair, that's even worse because that's their mentality. You know? Trying to bleach out and burn out what God made them natural to them. We've been down this road. Hmm? Why the fuck is this trashy person and this trashy person being put in with 1,000 go-ahead Tyrones? 
these people, these people for, for, for over 10 years, these people have been bringing the truth. 1000 go ahead and Tyrone. Why would you put these two people? They actually don't preach the same thing. They, they actually, if you put a dividing line right here, these two people ask your grandma, your grandma don't hold no goddamn records. This person has been a fraud since day one. Hey, dude, if you're sitting here reading this shit and it says Greek in Italy, then that connects to the Israelites, which these, uh, I don't even want to get into it. It's just, you, you got to take the trash out, bro. You fucking adding people that it's not going to benefit what you're trying to teach. I'm explaining this, man. If you go online, and you use a service to prove your ancestry and some bitch keeps on saying you don't need no records you just need your grandma's voice bro you, you bro you sabotaging yourself i've explained this many times many different ways i've explained it publicly i've explained it privately you're sabotaging yourself i mean That'd be like me inviting white Christians on here to to preach their fucking philosophy after I preach the truth. They they philosophy comes out of the same book that the truth come out of. They still lying. You shooting yourself in the foot, adding people that are against you. If you can prove you're indigenous and they sit there and say they publicly say do not use those records just go get what your grandma say <laughs> Bro, you, you, you you shot yourself in the foot with a shotgun and i'm sorry it shot the other foot too you can't fucking walk now right character from proto dramatic they tell you exactly where the fake being comes from hmm? phrygians Mm -hmm. Pretendicons. Hey, we're having a Comic Con. Oh, great. Dress up and pretend. <clears throat> when the Comic Con extends into real life, I'm white. I'm an Indian. Okay. Now you understand what the white man is saying. Look, I'm a $5 Indian. Through $5, I'm related to the Philippines now. You never even thought about that. Generally speaking to everybody. Hmm? The black Germans, the old Germans were moved out in the proto. The pronto. The pronto tantos was moved in. Hmm? It's all right here. You just have to look at these words, man. Let's go down a little bit. I can't find it where where the where the where the where the U is. I can't find it where the U. You want to say it's the one I'm looking for? There it is, right in the beginning. So A L B I hyphen Y U. Now, if all these other ones end with something else, they don't end on the vowel, right? I S ends with a consonant. Consonant. O N ends with a consonant. You understand what's just going on right here? They're hiding the H there, right? Because you have been taught God's name is Y-U-H or Y-A-H, yeah. So you see what the ending suffix is actually supposed to be, right? It's yaw. Now, 
when I type in Isaiah, Jeremiah, now you get well, Albion, right? It's not Albion, it's Albia, Albia. So, this is what they're hiding from me. Because they're trying to tell you in their own way who went there. All right? Again, when we have the books written by King James, and he connects the kings of the Bible to the kings of the Britonic era, then again, you can see who these peoples are. They're the Negroes. When we read out of the Bible that the the lions of kings, the lions that kill kings, are the Japhetites, and that they're coming out. We live in a time where we have black images and white images of the kings of the past. Well, clearly, from the Bible's own, own, own words, these people killed the kings and placed themselves as kings. Now, we have reached the giants of Albion, right? Um, pretty sure we got past this. Legend exists in various forms that giants were either the original inhabitants or the founders of the land and gave it the name. All right. Again. You can't be on the land and see the land from far away and say, look how white it looks. You can't be on the land and then say, oh, because over there is white, we can call it white. Over there is white, we'll call it white. And over there is white, we can call it white. You cannot speak a language nobody else speaks. Call something Albion and then the name stay when new people come. I was reading something and it gave everything away. I was reading about the Portuguese because my wife claims that she's Portuguese. And I have to explain to my wife, you're from a tribe that took over the people's port of, of Portugal. So started researching the customs of her particular tribe. And it led me somewhere. As I was studying the language, it states the language of Portugal is not Portuguese. The Portuguese language, they're just calling it Portuguese, is actually the language of the Galatians of the Bible. So inside the encyclopedias, they will fucking tell you when you look up the Portuguese language, there's no such thing as Portuguese language. It's just the Galatians of the Bible. And so, when we get it into it and we understand, those tribes came out and fought with the biblical tribes and removed them. Now they are in their stead today. This is why there's no ancient Portuguese language. All you have to do is look up the language and they're going to explain it to you. If there's no Portuguese language, there's no there's no Italian language. It's one of the biblical languages of the New Testament. If they claim the New Testament happened at zero, and they claim that Justinian is making deals with the barbarian, then the white images of Justinian are not true. If we read about Justinian's time and Procopius is saying that the barbarians are coming in and kidnapping Romans, then you can't be the Roman being kidnapped and the barbarian coming in and kidnapping your fucking self. If in, if years later, we're in Europe at this point, while we're, again, man, Rome is not in Europe. Rome wasn't in Italy. Rome sent men into Italy to steal from them. 
before the barbarian came in. So Romans was stealing from themselves before the barbarian came in. So Rome wasn't in Italy. Rome was somewhere else sending troops to steal in Italy. But you and me, we told Romans in Italy. There was an East Rome, meaning Asia, and there was a West Rome. <laughs> now, one of those Romes is right there opposite of Turkey. And that's still not Italy. All this is important because you were in these places. Like I'm talking to Vincent. You know what Vincent said? You know, in Italy, where they have those houses for one dollar? Let's look that up real quick. So here, you have the Italian homes that are just one dollar. Okay? These homes are so old, they need heavy re renovation. It has been years since anybody has lived inside of these homes. It's as if, <coughs> hold on, it's as if, how do you say this? It's as if all the Greeks and all the Italians, for some reason or another, just said, fuck it. Let's leave it all. Dear Holy Creator, what could make the people of Edom, the people of Shem, all in those regions, pack up and leave these great lands that you put in their possession. Could it be the lions that kill kings came around? And the kings were like, it make more sense for us to abandon this property and find a new place away from these people. Again, if you spend 1,000 years locking them away, and then they're free, and you can't lock them back up, don't they call that once the genie's outside the bottle? What we're not told is the Roman diaspora, diaspora, the Romans said, let's get the fuck out of here. All the great and mighty power of Rome said it's time to abandon ship. Barbarians are coming. Mm, same thing happened to America. Again, you've heard Dave Chappelle talk about his grandfather, but they recently showed you the image of James, uh, Dave Chappelle's grandfather. And that man is in a three-piece suit. It's not dressed like a slave. I don't care if Dave Chappelle comes on and says my grandfather was a slave. I'm going to call bullshit. I'm going to say he was a slave owner and he's probably overthrown. What that man's wearing in the picture ain't I've been brought here from Africa. He's wearing a three-piece suit. He's wearing a, I've been brought here from Europe. You've got to understand, there's a high-stakes game being played where even people that call themselves black because they got black eyebrows and black hair, they know the truth and they're not telling you the truth because you're on the bottom of the caste system. And they won't risk their daily five-course meal for your measly ass and my measly ass. They won't risk anything for us. Their masters say, come make some propaganda for these poor niggas. And they say, okay, let me change out of this dress and put some man clothes on before they see me.
Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle was in a dress long before he came on goddamn TV talking about, oh, they tried to put Martin in a dress. I'm going to say this again. So, what was going on, what Dave Chappelle failed to mention, was before him and Martin Lawrence were in a video together before they tried to make Martin Lawrence put on a dress. Dave Chappelle was in a movie with Carrie Hughes, and Carrie Hughes was the big star at the time. And to get the big star to be subordinate, they made him get into a dress. No different than they made Patrick Swayze, than they made Wesley Snipes. The only difference is Dave Chappelle had already wore that dress when he was on Oprah talking about they put you in a dress. Now again, what makes Wesley Snipes say, yeah, this will be a good movie for me? What makes Wesley Snipes say, yeah, this will be a good look for me? It should be fucking stunningly obvious Wesley Snipes got red skin when he dressed in red and his skin blended in. He's got a red auburn wig and parts of it's darker than him. It shouldn't take people that much to understand what's really going on. It shouldn't be any confusion at all. All these people you say, I'll pay to go watch, they're paid to mess your mind up. And this, this is why you don't know history. This, rappers, artists, Hmm? This is what keeps you busy from the truth. This. Shouldn't we all turn our turn ourselves around? Grab our own belts and beat the living shit out of ourselves for falling for this? You fell for this. This is what keeps you out of the truth. This is what keeps you out of the loop. This is what keeps you oppressed. This is. You know it and I know it. Who 
do you blame? Hmm? I blame the devil for acting like the devil. How dare the devil act like the devil? So, we're going to go into the Anglo Albina story, right? So, again, the Anglo are people pretending. The Anglo were originally the sons of Isaac, gone into what we call Europe. Those people have been moved out. You can find out who those people are from last names. Again, the last names of Shem do not match the last names of Ham. The last names of Shem do match the last names of Japheth. Somebody has stolen somebody else's last name. Now, is it the black people that are allegedly from Africa, but really from Britain? Or is it the barbarians that, that walk from one corner of the earth, stealing all the way to the other end of the earth, stealing? This, this isn't hard. People that call themselves the children of God today have a history of stealing from everybody on the face of the earth. They call themselves, you wish. You can wish you were the children of God. Children of Gomer. Gomer pile. Gomer pile of dung. Gomer pile of shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, Gomer's pile of shit. Woo -ha -ha! Later, in the 14th century, more elaborate tell was developed when the liars came out to lie. The liars came out to lie. Ooh, ooh. The liars came out to lie. Come out. Lies come out to lie. They claim that Albina and her sisters found Albion and procreated with a race of giants. Now, imagine... You were sitting behind the Caucasus Mountains, and you were like, hmm, you know what would be a good story for this? If they was caught fucking giants like we were. So, giant fuckers came out with a story of somebody was fucking giants just like we were, right? It survives in several forms, right? How many tribes do they have? That's the several forms, right? It's just each of their tribes saying different, like, bullshit, right? Including the octosyllabic Anglo-Norman poem, Dietz, Grantz, Glintz. That's nothing to do with English. Dietz, Grantz, Glintz, now. That has to do with white Jafetites coming out, pretending to be Germans, and then they talk in these kind of... Yeah, that's what that fucking is. If you got distaste for me doing that, then you didn't like me pretending to be them. I have distaste all the time. It's not because of my teeth, it's because I see pretend everywhere. Hmm. Everybody pretending. This glance glean. Uh, it ain't got nothing to do with that. According to the poem, the year of creation was 3970. Right? I bet the Sumerians would argue against that. A king of Greece married his 30 daughters unto royalty, but the uh, royalty, but the haughty brides con colluded to eliminate their husbands so that they would what? So they would be subservient to none. The youngest would not be party to the crime and divulge the plot, so the other princesses were confined and what? To an unsteerable rudderless ship set adrift. And after three days, that's Jesus talk, fake shit, reached an uninhabitable land. Then how'd you get to the giants if there was nobody inhabiting? The eldest daughter was first to step ashore, so she laid claim to it, naming it after herself. 
At first the women gathered acorns and fruit, but once they learned to hunt and obtain meat, it aroused lecherous desires. So if, <clears throat> if you have that that scanner on your shoulder that when you read things you can tell if they're sexist, you can tell if they're racist. Uh, okay, so this was a, a, a sexist statement, right? So these women were abandoned because of the treachery. They were set adrift. They found this land. They started eating nuts and berries. Then they said, no, let us chase the animals. And once they started dealing with meat and the blood of meat, don't these women have cycles? Don't they deal with their own blood? Once they were dealing with the blood of meat, that became, they then became, lecherous. get the fuck out of here with some stupid shit, man. You know, that other scanner that can tell lies, that motherfucker, it's going crazy. Okay, so become a lecherous desires as no other humans inhabited the land. They mated with evil spirits called incubi. Now, where did these evil spirits come from? You see this story, as soon as something is convenient, it just appears. First they found an island, and then they were hungry, so they nuts and berries and then at the island instead of going fishing for fish they decided to chase the animals that act acting as men they became desirous of other flesh for sexuality shut the fuck up so subsequently sex with the ghost spirit incubi who they begot sons from that and engendering a giant race so they spurned a race of giants from huh swashbuckling a, a ghost ah, these giants are evidenced by huge bones which are on earth right so if you believe that story tell me what city you live in i have a bridge that's already there ready to sell to you you know last time i said that somebody called they did they missed they missed the joke before they missed the statement before leading into the joke so I'm not saying that person's name, but I am saying hi to them. Um, hope you're doing okay. Don't mind if you call about questions. Please do not call about the bridge to sell to you. All right, manuscripts. So, octosyllabic poem appears in dialogue 26. Uh, 16 out of 26 manuscripts of the short version of the prowls brute, uh, which derives from what Wace, Wace, Robert Wace, a medieval Norman poet who was born in Jersey and brought up in the mainland of Normandy, he tells us in the Roman de Roth that he, he was taken as a child to uh, whatever. Bullshit. And they already know it's bullshit because they cover it uh, down here. Um, so, basically they have poems, right? 26 manuscripts exist. Out of 26, 16 have the poem. Uh, Des, the German ver version, exists in five forms. The other forms being Alexandrian, which means what? Egyptian. Prowse short verse and short prose verse the latin adaptation of the albania story is called right here origin of the gigantium appearing soon later in the 1330s so again this is a story somebody found it as a book they judged right there on the spot is this true or is this fake they judged it was true and they went forward with that i'm going to prove it by reading two paragraphs below so 
uh, and it appeared sometime later, is edited by these two and translated by Ru, right? Diocletian's Daughters. A variant of the tales occurs in Middle English prose called Brut, all right, or Brie, all right? The Brut or the Chronicles of England. It was written in 1906 to 1908, and it's of the 14th century. So you understand they're writing it 500 years later, and all they have is the other previous writings. An English rendition of this, deriving from Waste version, in the prologue of the Chronicle, it was King Diocletian of Surrey, or Syria, who had 33 daughters, the eldest being called Albine. The princesses are banished to Albion after plotting to murder their husbands, where they couple with the local demons. Their offspring are a race of giants. The chronicle asserts the that during the voyage, Albion entrusted the fate of her sisters to Alpion, excuse me, Apollyon, which was the god of their faith. Now, again, that's written with what? The New Testament. Now, does that make sense? The Syrian king, who is the father, sounds much like the Roman emperor, though Diocletian, who was in the third century, would be anachronistic. Anachronistic means out of time, right? Let's make sure that means out of time. Move this. Uh, do it. Search. Duck, duck, go. Move that back. Pertaining to... Okay. Anachronistia. See, this is... See how it's Ashkenazi? This is, is, is it's the same kind of setting word for time right back again so it's get again it's out of place of chronology and again this is an this is a scathian word you can tell by how it ends stia right like anesthesia right anesthesia <clears throat> hollands explained the boggling of the legend of danis and his 50 daughters who were found in argos now there is the true answer right there it's out of time and out of place. Halin, Halinish explains this is a bund, huh, bungling of legend of Danis and his 50 daughters who are found in Argus. Later treatment of the myth because Geoffrey of Mon Monmouth's work is to be considered unscratchable until you find out he was writing bullshit. Uh, the work was regarded as fact until the 17th century. Oh. So, Jeffrey's work was considered fact until the 17th century. They started reading other people's shit, and they were like, what the fuck is this dude writing? So, the story appears in most early historians of Britain. Wallace, Leaman, Ralph Hollinshed. William Camden uh, repeated the legend, repeated the legend, that is what? That is not a fact. You see what's going on? Somebody said, I'm a writer, and then they found a book, and then they copied the story out of the book. They took credit for the story that they copied out of that book, and then fucking years later, they're like, oh, this shit was bullshit. So it actually goes back. Not to Diocletian, of Syrian king, again, they're, they're telling you, if they tell you Diocletian is a Syrian king, and he's king of Rome, then they're telling you Rome is Syria. Now, most people should have known that. Now, how would people know that? Well, when we was reading about Procopius, what did they say about Syria? Anybody remember? Hmm? When we were reading about Ptolemy, what did they say about Syria? Ptolemy was fighting who? Hmm? Seleucid Empire. Now, 
the Seleucid Empire turns up. The Seleucid is Syria. So, but Ptolemy Greeks that take over Egypt versus Seleucid Empire Greeks that take over Syria. They're both Greeks. Hmm? So, what's really going on? Don't fall for these fucking images. Do not. They told you. Afro-Asiatic roots of classical civilization. The roots of our civilization today is Greece. The Hellenistic. The Hellens that are fighting the Israelites in what we call the Bible. If the Israelites are fighting the Greeks in the Bible, and the Israelites get enslaved, and all of a sudden you got a New Testament, that means Black Athena won. If Black Athena won, and then what happened? The lions that killed kings were released. You have it. You know the truth now. So, again, all this stuff is being hidden from you. They don't respect you. They want you to work as a slave. As long as you keep going to work, they don't give a fuck. You, you will not do anything to stop them. The only thing you can do to stop them is go back to God. You will not go back to God. It's that simple. If I go to other YouTubers that preach in a bubble that's actually around all this information, but never touching on it, they don't touch the information because they don't want to reconnect with God. They like what the white man has built. They just don't like that they're pushed to the side of what the white man has built. They want what the white man has built. They do not want what the Most High is willing to give them. They want to play these games of filth. They want to suck. They want to fuck. They want to be fucked. You cannot have that. When you worship the Most High, you have to choose one. And as long as people get in the screens and make their tits bounce, you're not going to win. As long as people get in the screen and make their ass juggle, you're not going to get that. As long as you stay in a poor position and somebody tells you in music, if you take that baking soda and gives you instructions on how to make a little bit of dirty money, you're going to you're going to go for that and you're not going to want the truth you've been given filth you've been given the crust in a cup that hasn't been used for over a week and you're happy with that and i'm not and that is the difference i want more because what happens to the next generation and the next generation? We live in a society where we already outnumbered them and slowly but surely they are outnumbering us. And every day we die. We are killed in the streets and they are hold themselves unaccountable. And there's nothing that you can do. Doing anything violent against them breaks the Ten Commandments. You are between your rock, your foundation, your Elohim, 
your Eloha in a hard place. The oppression your Elohim put against you because you would not serve him. You have a choice to make. Continue down the path that you're on. And there's no tomorrow. There is no second life for you. Their system must end in turmoil. It must end in destruction because it was told by he who created it. He who gave them power to strip from us and to build for themselves. Don't think they are doing anything they were supposed to do. They're a destructive force that was meant to destroy, not to build. A little bit of building is vanity to make you and me say, ooh. But aside from that, it's sad. Get in your car. Drive around. Find a construction crew working. I want you to do, count the men. Count the men that are black, count the men that are white. If you find a construction crew working in a city that has more black workers than white workers, I would like you to call me immediately. 330-734-5550 tell me where that is everywhere I go and no no make it sound like I go far everywhere I go and I've been far I see white construction crews and they might have one or two black people token and those black people they'll be holding the broom or holding something as if they're not to interfere with the work of the others. As long as there's a city, half of these jobs have always been here since the dawn of time. I'm sure there was a point when there was all black workers and white workers couldn't come in. And I can prove that because Almost every city they've taken over, they could not control the sewer system or the water system coming in. In this modern time, this is something that you can see with your own eyes. People make devastating jokes against these people. How many black people have you ever seen out at the forest? Hmm? How many black people do you see at national parks? Most people only see white people. Yet, in all these national parks, it is filthy, it is trash, you have spray paint, you don't even have no graffiti spray paint, don't even try that shit. You have stupid man spray paint, stupid barbarian spray paint. One of these guys got a damn joke, said Smokey Bear said, keep the white trash out the fucking forest. You can't sit there and act like I'm the best thing that God's ever made. But when you go to the forest, it look like a dumpster after you leave. There are places that Humans can no longer go because the white man went there and just dumped trash. Like he just can't throw shit away. Surely we can see the same thing in black neighborhoods as we see rappers and cartons and all kinds of shit thrown around. Only problem is, and that is where oppression is taking place. Hmm? We have all these street cleaning vehicles we never even send out. It's almost like we want everything to look like shit so we can point the finger at somebody. Motherfucker, don't nobody go in the forest but you. You go there, you rape, you kill, you fucking murder, and of course you drop your goddamn trash all around. 
love to hear the argument, the rebuttal to that shit. I'll bring up 25 fucking videos where, no, can come back here, white man come here and trash everything. Look at how this person acts. He goes, builds a house, lives in the house five years, then is demolished. I'm in a house that's over a hundred years old. Generations have lived in this house. They have a house five years, it has to be destroyed. What the fuck did you do in that house? that they deem that shit needs to be destroyed. This ain't got nothing to do. We bought building supplies from Korea, but they're infested. No, that's the dumbest shit that you would buy any goddamn thing from another fucking country that you have to pay shipping to get it to this motherfucker. Then you got to ship it inland. No, you are the dumbest motherfucker ever. That's me raising my mass. I swear you're the dumbest motherfucker ever. You, you keep buying Asian infested shit. That's beside the point. What happens in these homes that the whole home has, whole brand new house has to be demolished? How come every time I get in the shower, I turn the shower on, and it's comfortable in a rain-like manner. How come every time I watch a white movie, the white man's got to step in, in, in front of a power blower fucking uh, shower? Hmm? Dark-skinned man getting under that kind of shower pressure, it'll blow his fucking melanin right off his skin. Huh? What the fuck? You ever steam clean a building? The pressure wash and shit. Why do they have to pressure wash themselves? You know, I uh, actually looked on both. Took a pick. Took a peek over on Duck Duck. Go ahead. Let's go back. So on Duck Duck, you know, white people take high pressure showers. Uh, you know, not really looking for what I'm looking for. You know, when you go back in, you know, the nine annoying things. Uh, yeah, it's 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 not in there. But uh, you know. I can imagine what the answer to this is. Eh, just gonna let it go. Before we got out of here, Lyndon B. Johnson's White House shower had nozzles aimed at his at his Lyndon B. Johnson. All right, the equivalent of a fire hose. Right, needle-like intensity, and had water pressure. So why did he have fire hydrant equivalent pointed at his junk? Again, this is just a basic question, you know, um, when you look at movies, it's always got to show this motherfucker in the shower, always got to show him standing in front of a fire hydrant with this water coming out at air force speeds, blasting any pigment that might have came back right off the skin. This is one of these questions that uh, I'll publicly ask. I just won't privately ask anyone. Why are they water picking themselves? All right, we're going to leave off there. When we come back, we are done with Albion. We're going to be, be going on to Troy and Brutus. Uh, we might do Dennis. Dennis has, uh, boy, this isn't even worth it. Dennis has 50 wives, is, uh, 50 daughters, is fucking, uh, tells you. There are so many daughters, they tell you exactly who he had them with. All right. So, again, Dennis is a Trojan. In Greek mythology, Danius 
was the king of Libya. His myth is the foundation or legend of Argos, uh, one of the foremost Mycenaean cities of Peloponnesus. In Homer's Iliad, the, Dani the Danans, tribe of Dana the Danans, tribe of Danius and Argus commonly designate the Greek forces. So it's the Danans versus the Argives, right? No. All right, so I'm going to stop there. Look, the kids are, the children are screaming like fucking goats. So I'm going to stop here so I don't have to compete with them. Um, oh, just, just, just let them be instead of, you know, go upstairs and sit down and shut up. So, yeah, we'll do the Dennis. We'll do Dennis, and we'll, we'll talk about this and see what we can bring up to show a strong connection to, uh, to the Danites. What I'm going to suggest, I'm not going to suggest anything. We'll, we'll find what we find, um, and, and we'll come back from there. I want to thank you all for joining us, and have a, a blessed day.